topic of this presentation is the Newcomen steam engine, also known as the atmospheric engine. I am your narrator, James Marvin. I tried to get Morgan Freeman, but apparently he was already booked, probably by one of you guys. The Newcomen steam engine was invented by Thomas Newcomen in 1712. Newcomen was born on February 3rd, 1664 in Devon, England. He was born into a Baptist family of merchants. Newcomen was baptized at St. Savior's Church in his hometown. His connections to the church aided in the success of the Newcomen engine during its early years. Uh, we'll get into that a little more later, though. Thomas Newcomen's ironmonger business uh, designed and produced tools, especially for the mining industry. The skills and resources developed while designing tools for the mining industry put Newcomen in a great position to invent and improve upon tools of the trade. Uh, ironmonger, that sounded kind of evil or something to me, but you look it up and ironmonger is someone who deals in metal goods, including tools and hardware. So, it's not evil after all. Uh, well, in the mining business, uh, flood danger in mining led Newcomen to develop an improved method for pumping water out of the mines that greatly improved previous methods. Though he did not invent the steam engine, the Newcomen steam engine was such a tremendous success that it remained the best tool for the job for over 60 years. In some cases, his steam engine was used much longer because of the reliability, even though a significantly better technology was developed by James Watt. Thomas Newcomen died in 1729, and the exact location of his grave is unknown. To give you a quick example, if you're familiar with the workings of an internal combustion engine, um, you can relate it to the steam engine. They both have pistons um, that drive a shaft that powers whatever mechanism is connected to it. They both have cylinders, and the piston within that cylinder is thrusted up the cylinder powering a drive shaft. Uh, the difference is where that power come from. Power comes from uh, the internal combustion engine. It comes from an explosion caused by igniting some gasoline. But in a steam engine, it comes from the expansion of steam. You open a little valve. It allows steam to flood and expand the cylinder, forcing the piston up, which drives the shaft. Okay, here's a brief overview of the Newcomen engine. Uh, you use fire to heat water, which generates steam. That steam pushes the piston up, and as that piston moves up, it moves the drive arm up. Then, when the cylinder is open, a little bit of water is sprayed into it to cool the cylinder and starts to condense the steam that is already in there. And as that steam condenses, it pulls the piston back down. And the big thing here is that piston being forced down um, pulls on that drive drive arm and it's powered down instead of just falling. That was the major problem with steam engines that came before Newcomen's. Um, the steam pushed it up, but when it came back down, there was no, no power behind it. It was only one of the strokes actually provided power for the engine. The improvement made by Thomas was making that second stroke, the piston coming down, powered. 
and he did that by creating a pressure differential. Um, that pressure differential caused the stroke down to be a power stroke, making both the upward and downward strokes capable of generating power. Uh, the problem Newcomen's predecessors had was making this action repeatable, uh, running like an engine without having to be constantly altered or moved or changed by a person. They needed it to be sustainable on its own. Uh, the Newcomb engine has the, the addition of a boiler, uh, gave the engine a large steam capacity, kind of like a gas tank, so something didn't have to constantly add water to it. It had a large tank to feed itself and would actually sustain longer than uh, any of its predecessors would. And then most important, it had this second power stroke. We'll go into more details on that uh, lower pressure differential that caused the power second stroke in the next couple of slides. Oh, here we go. This is that important downstroke. Uh, on the return of the piston to its starting position at the bottom, uh, it's very important for repeatability and dependability of the engine. Uh, it was done by spraying water into the hot cylinder, cooling it, and condensing the water vapor, the steam, that created a pressure differential, lower pressure inside the cylinder than the exterior atmospheric temperature. That lower temperature inside basically created a suction, pulling the piston back down and powering the opposite stroke of the drive arm. So this vacuum created is what allowed for the powered downstroke, which made this engine different from its predecessors, significantly different. Another importance of this powered downstroke um, is that there is no downtime, there is no wasted time while the piston resets to the bottom because it resetting to the bottom is also powered continuing power to whatever the engine is turning or pumping or pulling. In these next couple slides, I'm going to take you through the entire cycle of the Newcomen steam engine or atmospheric engine uh, so we can see each individual little part and its function in detail. So this first one it shows the heat is generated in a little fireplace at the very bottom. You put wood in it, light it on fire, and that creates the heat that heats the water in the boiler. So this boiler holds all of the water, all of the steam, and all of the pressure. And there's a valve just above it. Uh, the reservoir is blocked by this valve until it opens. The valve opens, uh, releasing the pressurized steam from the reservoir and it fills the volume of the cylinder, rapidly expands in there, uh, driving the piston up. And the piston is connected to this lever that is also pushed up and that lever is attached to a rocking beam. The beam rocks back and forth, it pivots on a fulcrum, and during the expansion of the steam, it pivots this side up, which pushes the other side down, creating the first stroke of the engine. Then we move to the downstroke, and the steam valve is closed, sealing it off, sealing the cylinder off from any more expansion, any more steam from the boiler. 
then a small water valve is open, spraying just a little bit of water into the cylinder, cooling it, more importantly, cooling the steam in the cylinder. By cooling this steam, it condenses it. This condensation, this shrinking of the steam within the cylinder creates a low pressure. The pressure is much lower in the cylinder than the atmospheric pressure outside surrounding the cylinder. This pressure differential actually causes a suction, withdrawing the piston back down into the cylinder, which gives it its second half power stroke which makes this unique from other steam engines before. And the piston coming down pulls on the lever, the same one it pushed up, which is attached to the same fulcrum, and moves the drive shaft back up, giving it the up and down function to mechanically move something like a pump now here we have a little animation this kind of puts it all together you see the up and down of the drive shaft uh, this is how it powers a machine you see the pink is hot and the blue is cold so when the steam valve opens the pink which is the hot steam flows into the cylinder pushing it up and then that valve is closed and a little spurt of water, blue cold water is sprayed into the cylinder, which rapidly cools it, causing the whole cylinder to turn blue, meaning the temperature dropped. And there's much less volume in there, so it wants to go back to a normal size by sucking the piston back down, giving it the second power stroke. Soon mines from all over England were using the Newcomen steam engine to keep water away from their employees and out of their mines. Uh, it was suggested that Newcomen's connections to the Baptist Church was one way that knowledge of his invention spread so quickly, uh, why he became so prolific and so popular. By 1725, uh, his engine was widely used in mining companies. Uh, the number of Newcomen steam engines um, had grown to about 600 by the 1770s. Some Newcomen engines were even used to pump municipal water supplies, bring people water to their homes and stuff. Uh, throughout the 18th century, hundreds of Newcomen engines were produced. Their use spread from Britain throughout Europe, all over the place. There's tons of these things. Uh, there are even some still working today. Not original, but of the exact same design. There are still a couple that you can visit a museum and see them functioning today. Eventually, the world saw the decline of the Newcomen steam engine. Uh, this is a good thing. We make progress, and progress is good. By no means was the Newcomen engine efficient. Um, it used its energy very inefficiently and had very high operating costs. It took a lot of coal to feed this thing. It burned a lot of coal to keep it hot and pressurized, and that cost a lot. Unless you were actually a coal mine, you could provide your own coal and run it as long as you wanted, but for other mines, other operations, uh, this became very expensive to maintain. Uh, not to mention that the single cylinder design was unstable. One piston, heavy piston, moving up and down very quickly caused a lot of wobble. Uh, and these towers were very heavy, they were very large and cumbersome. So eventually the Newcomen steam engine was replaced. Uh, but it was only replaced when a guy named James Watt made an improvement on it. So he didn't rebuild it from scratch. Um, he just made a very good improvement to the Newcomen engine. Uh, Watt developed an engine that uh, had the compressor on the outside of the cylinder. So by moving the 
the compressor to the outside of the cylinder, he eliminated the need for the high pressure steam. Um, so this made it safer to operate uh, it, without high pressure steam. Um, it was much less likely to explode, causing injury. Um, also, not having to be so high pressure, it didn't require as much energy to run, so it was a little bit cheaper. So, small improvement, big deal, because this one is definitely the one remembered in history. When people think back to steam engines, they don't always think back to the Newcomen steam engine. They usually think of the Watt engine. But the Newcomen engine was the high-tech go-to steam engine for 60 years, so... That was still pretty cool, pretty significant. This is a Newcomen style engine on display at the Elsicar Heritage Center in South York, England. It's like a living history museum, so I assume it's working, at least in some way, or, or not. I don't know if it's working. This picture was taken in 2006, so for all I know, it's, it's not even there anymore. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening, even though you have to at least watch some. Uh, but thank you for choosing mine. Sorry I'm not Morgan Freeman, but uh, here's a picture of him to make you feel better. I guess I should have put this picture in the beginning so you could have imagined that it was his voice narrating it instead of mine, but it's too late now. Uh, I'm not recording this again. That took forever. Uh, thanks for watching, and good night. Um, it's night for me, at least, so we're just going to stick with that. Thanks.